Hey everyone, this is Colin and in today's video I'm going to replace the chain ring on the Jetson Bolt Pro. If you guys haven't seen this video of my review, go check that out on my channel. I'll put a link in the description section below. Just for reference, I believe this is a 42 teeth. I'll correct it on the screen if I'm wrong. But in my review I said that with pedal assist and the throttle I was getting around 13 miles per hour even though it advertised 15. But if I pedaled really hard I was getting 16 miles per hour and that's with the stock uh, chain ring. I think I could do better. So this chain ring, I bought this separately and originally it came with this red 45 teeth chain ring but 45 isn't that much compared to 42 so I thought I could do better. So I bought this chain ring separately. This is a 53 teeth. I think I can get 20 miles per hour by pedaling so we'll see. In the other video I mentioned that I felt like I was pedaling and I wasn't going very fast so that's why I'm doing this upgrade. Also because the seat can only go so high I still felt like my legs were a little crunched. I'm 5'11 and having this crank extend a little more. Let me just measure it. This one is about 6 inches and then this new one, this crank arm is like seven, so we're getting another inch of uh, pedal. Let me just go over the materials that we have right here. We have the new crank set here and the other arm for the other side, the left side. Because we're adding a larger ring in the front, this chain needs to be longer. This one isn't uh, long enough. You would use your chain breaker, break off a section, and then you can add a section to extend it. I have a spare chain with 116 links, I, I don't think I'll be using all of it. So I'm just gonna use this to keep it consistent. I have these magnets. I'm not sure if it actually needs the magnets to tell if the pedal assist needs to function, but we'll see. I have the screwdriver to take these screws off right here. We won't be using this guard anymore because it's too small. You can see that this new chain ring is taller than the guard. We have this, this is a 8 millimeter Allen and that's to break this off and then we have a pedal remover to remove the pedals. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm just going to take the pedals off because I want to reuse them. For the right side, it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. And then for the other side, it's the opposite. So it's uh, righty loosey, lefty tighty. I have both of these off, I'm going to set them to the side. I'm going to use my Phillips head screwdriver to remove this guard. There's a screw right here, right here, and there's one right here. I suppose if you wanted to, you could have, you could keep this on and just cut off a section. Um, but we'll see. Put that off to the side. I'm going to use my 8 millimeter Allen key. Push this around so I get more leverage. It's getting a bit difficult to wiggle this off, so I have this crank remover tool, and essentially you just spin this on and once it's on you tighten this and it'll push this out so let's do that just spin this on and then tighten this Have this off. Go ahead and take the tool off. Inspect this. I don't see any magnet here, but could be built in somewhere. I'm going to try and saw in the new crank and see if the pedal assist works. This does feel heavy. Feels a lot heavier than the new one. 
So just to show you guys, if I put this in place, the chain is not long enough. Could have done this earlier, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll place the chain in here. And then break the chain. And if you guys can see it, you don't want to push the pin all the way out. You want to push it so it hangs on to uh, this side. So if it's like this, you want to push the pin so it hangs right here. Because it's a pain to get that pin back in. So sometimes you can be more conservative. And see what I did? I didn't push it far enough, so it's not coming out, but that's okay. Better to be safe and not push it out than to push it out. Let me just do half a turn, see if this works. Still not enough. That was enough to break it, so now that we have this out, Take this out. I counted the teeth. There's actually 38 teeth, so 53 is a significant upgrade. And the rear has 12 teeth. So now that I have this off, I'm going to put the new one in. I'll take this other crank off later. This is 140, I think that's centimeters but the new one is 170. You see this crank right here? You actually want it about 180 degrees from the other side because if you installed it this way, you wouldn't be able to pedal. So let's get this in here. Got this right here. Tighten it back. That's pretty tight. Huge, huge upgrade, look at that. The chain spacing wasn't wide enough, so it was hitting the teeth in the back, so I need to get a new chain. But in the meantime, I just want to show you that you actually don't need to add magnets. If I just turn the crank, the rear starts spinning. Whatever magnet there is, I think it's internal inside the bottom bracket, so you actually don't need more magnet. In the meantime, I'm just going to replace the other crank on the other side. And right here I see that there is a cable, so I think that the magnet is inside the bottom bracket right here. Let me turn, turn it off. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for a new chain, I'm going to reinstall these pedals. On the left side, it's uh, lefty tidy. Righty tidy on the right side. If you want, you could put thread locker before you tighten this. Some people suggest that. So just looking at this. I suppose if you wanted to keep this, you could put the screw in and then put an extension piece from this area to like up here, like just get a piece of metal and drill a hole in it and you can extend this up. But I don't really care about that, so I'm taking that off. And then, yeah, just gotta wait for a new chain to arrive and then I'll put this back on. This is with the throttle, it still works. And then this is what the pedal still works. Bought a new chain from Amazon. This is a half inch, so a half inch spacing by one eighth inch thickness. And this was like seven dollars from Amazon. Just got it in today. Ordered it yesterday. Check it out. Yeah, this one fits a lot better than the one from yesterday. 
right now I am going to break the chain right here didn't think I'd have to do this but right now I'm going to break the rear axle I'm gonna loosen this this is a 19 millimeter I already loosened it up I also have a 10 millimeter I'm going to loosen this where I want the chain to line up I don't have enough slack which is why I use the 19 millimeter here and the 10 millimeter here and then I can push this in a little and that way this can line up so I'm just going to break the chain right here I have this facing outside that way I can push the pin back in where it's be a lot easier let's check this one now I'm able to take that off we have this lined up now I'm going to push this pin back in it comes with these quick release links and the purpose of this is that if the chain ever breaks you can always take it off pretty easily and then put it back on but the thing is this is a single speed it's not a derailleured one if it breaks anywhere you pretty much have to use a chain breaker and replace the link you can't really get this any shorter so I like to do it this way just because I feel like it's more secure. It seems to be in and when you take this off you'll notice that it's it binds a little. Like if it were to rotate it's kind of sticky. So what I like to do is you can put some oil but I'm just gonna rock this back and forward just to get it loose. So it's a lot looser. That way it spins better or doesn't get caught here. And then you notice that there is some slack still left over and that's where we take our 10 millimeter socket and then we'll tighten it until you need some slack but not a lot. I think that might be good. And then once that's in place, we want to make sure that this is straight again. And then when that's good, take your 19 millimeter and then tighten this back down. And you'll know for sure if the wheel is not straight because it'll rub onto the brake. Let me just tighten this. And then I actually adjusted the tension so there's more slack because when it was tight before it was binding right here um, when I was cranking. So right now you can see that there's a pretty decent amount of uh, slack and it seems to be spinning a lot better. So just to show you guys, there still is resistance on the rear wheel, but I think it was always like that, but I don't really hear any caliper binding in the back, so I think it's good. So I think we're good here. I tightened this, I tightened this, I tightened the adjustment for the slack, and then I tightened the bolts to hold the rear hub in place. So I think we're done. Right now I'm going to test the max speed with the 53 teeth chain. If you want to check out the max speed with the throttle only, that's in my other video, which I'll post the link of in the uh, description section below. And I think with the throttle only, last time we only got 13 miles per hour. And with the pedal assist, with the 38 teeth chain ring in the front, we got 16 miles per hour. I'm just going to pedal as hard as I can and see how fast we can go. So. Definitely right now it takes a lot more effort to get going because I'm going from 38 to 53 to I think it's like 23% more um, resistance or teeth that you have to rotate every time. So let me just see how fast I can go. 
14, 15. So we got 21. We hit 21 miles per hour that time, but I was at the end of the road. So let me try that again on this street. So we'll get some momentum going. We're at 9, 11, 12, 13. Ran out of road. This is definitely a lot harder to pedal. Getting tired. Let me just coast for a little bit. So right now we're just we're just using the throttle, getting 14 miles per hour. Changing it from 38 teeth to 53 teeth is definitely a lot more difficult to pedal. With the stock chain ring, I could pedal as fast as I could, and I felt like. I was wasting energy because there wasn't enough teeth, but 53 teeth is definitely a lot more difficult to pedal. One thing I noticed is that because there's 53 teeth, even with the pedal assist on, it doesn't feel like it's doing much. Like this somewhat of an incline, I feel like the pedal assist is not kicking in. Maybe because it takes more rotations to register. Starting from a stop on an incline, definitely a lot more difficult to pedal. Yeah, so in the past, for one revelation, you would pedal 38 teeth in the front. Now I have to go through 53. The pedal assist sensor is in line with the bottom bracket. So in the past, when I pedaled 100 teeth on 38, I I was nearly doing three rotations, three circles on the front, but now because there's 53 teeth, I'm essentially doing two. So there's a huge difference in effort that I have to put on the front and I would do less revelations, meaning less times that the pedal assist kicks in. So I feel like even though the pedal assist is on, it's not really doing much. So. One way to get over that is you can also use the, the throttle, the hand throttle, and then pedal as well. But sometimes you get lazy and you don't want to use the hand throttle. So you can press this once and the cruise control is on and then you can also pedal. I think with the cruise control or the thumb throttle, you're only going to get 14 miles per hour. So then you can pedal a little faster to get that 18, 20 miles per hour. So, yeah, overall, it's definitely more of a workout. Um, would I recommend this? I, I don't know. Um, before, I could only get like 16 miles per hour pedaling my best. Now I'm getting 21, but it's very hard to maintain. If you really need to like travel very far, then that 16 to 21 mile per hour difference might be uh, beneficial for you, but I don't know in my case if it's really worth it. I actually took the chain off to test if the pedal assist was actually working and I noticed that I could actually bike normally without the chain, which I've shown in a video. I'll link it in the description section below. Check that out. I might actually take end up taking the chain off and just biking without a chain because there's no resistance. So overall, this is just a just to show you that you could put a 53 teeth chain on the front. You don't have to 
put any magnets or replace anything, you can just do that and you can hit 21 miles per hour. Let me know what brought you to this video, if you thought this was cool as I did, if you like it or if you're considering trying it or if you've tried it. So thank you guys for watching and uh, God bless.